All right, everyone, here is a tutorial on setting up a file in Inkscape, uh, which is a vector graphics software. Uh, that way we can send files to the, a laser cutter. So uh, basic idea here, first off, it is free to download. So uh, if you don't have it on your computer already, I would go ahead and go to inkscape.org. Uh, you can download the current version, uh, as you can see there, and then go ahead and install it onto your computer. Uh, here's the um, file there. So you can kind of do that on your own. If you're using one of our school computers, then it should be on there already. Uh, you're looking for a icon that looks something like this. Let me drag it over onto our screen here. Uh, looks something like that. So uh, you can find that on your desktop um, or obviously you can search for it uh, in the search menu on your Windows computer. All right. So, so ideally, it's kind of what we want to be getting to, right? Uh, this is uh, an example of a box that we were putting together for uh, our unified group as a gift. Um, so everything you see here in red is going to be cut um, on the laser cutter. So it'll burn all the way through the material while things in black would be engraved, right? So main difference is power setting and speed setting. So um, the way a laser cutter works is it takes a laser, and the longer it's there, so if it's slow speed and high power, then it'll burn all the way through the material. If it is higher speed with lower power, then it'll kind of just burn the top of it, and that's how you get uh, engraving. Okay, so that's kind of the basic concept that we want to get at. Uh, now, in terms of vector graphics, so when you typically bring in an image, you know, it's just going to be kind of sitting there as a picture. Uh, we want to turn it into points. Right? So if I double click on this current file, this is already a vector file. And if I double click on this, you can kind of see there's little points, right? There's these little points and that's what the uh, laser cutter is using to essentially connect the dots to create whatever shape you want. Okay. All right, so assuming you have Inkscape loaded up and you want to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this for now and then start fresh. So uh, first thing I like to do is come over here to file and I would come over to document properties and then this menu should pop up. And uh, generally, we'll probably deal with inches because a lot of times we're using things in inches. Uh, and I'd like to go ahead and set the size of the laser cutter, what it can cut. And usually it's right around 12 by 20. Uh, technically, it's a little bit less than that, but you know that'll give you kind of the general size that we have to work with. Okay, once I have that set, now I kind of have an idea of how much room I have to work with. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is bring in some images, right? So you can uh, find an image online and you're going to import it. Okay, so one way you can do that is come here, file, import. Uh, as you can see here, the shortcut is control I. Okay, so now import, and I'm going to go and find, uh, in our case, I'm going to use maybe, let's say, our Northville STEM logo that we created a few years back. Actually, one of the former students did it. So click on OK, and we're going to go ahead and embed it. Okay, so right now, this is just a picture like you would normally find on your computer. Um, I would say the more simple the graphic is, the better this is going to work. Um, and so often, oftentimes, you know, simple logo designs is a great way to start. Okay, so once you have your image in here, I'm going to come over here to Object, or start path, and then we'll hit this option that says Trace Bitmap. Okay, so now Trace Bitmap, this, there's actually quite a few tools you can mess around with here, depending on how you want to do this. Uh, I personally end up using it for logos like this. I like to split it up by color. And then depending on how many colors you have, you'll change the number of scans. And now, let me click on this live preview as well so you can kind of see what's happening. So, uh, for example, I might bring this down to, let's do like five scans. Look like five. If I see my live preview here, it looks pretty accurate to what I like. So I'll hit OK. Uh, you can also just choose this remove background, which is a nice feature. So that way, it's just kind of the image you want. Okay, so hit OK. And now, if I come back to my file, and let me remove the original here. Okay, so there's my original. Now, now I've created a vector file. So now, if I let me see here, if I double click here, you can pull individual sections of color now. Okay, kind of see how that works. I'm going to kind of link them back together for a second. Uh, if you click and drag over, you can highlight everything. That's pretty 
three times five. Okay, so now what I might want to do is see which colors kind of pick the best. Okay, so I'm liking this black one probably the most. It has all my features to it. Uh, these other ones are kind of a big outline. If I maybe want to keep that one around. And then this is kind of the same shape. This is just the outline again. So I'm just going to keep these two layers. Okay, so now one layer is going to be what I kind of engrave. And then, uh, for example, I might have that second layer. It's just what I'm cutting out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is, and actually, I'm not going to pull them apart here just to show you something. So if I double click now, see I have a bunch of little dots. All right, sorry. Uh, and if you want to zoom in, you're going to hold down control while you scroll the wheel, and that way you can zoom. And you can see a bunch of little dots here kind of showing that's what the laser cutter is going to follow. So let's say my idea here is I'm going to just cut out this shape. And so I don't want any of these to get cut out. And maybe you do in some cases, but in my case here, I want that to just be, um, actually, you know what, on second thought, it might be kind of cool to have this cut out. All right, so I'm, I'm going to leave this as a cutout. And what I'm going to want to do here is change the fill of the fill and stroke of that object. So you see under object, click fill and stroke. And what I'm going to want this to do, since I want it to cut, I just want it to be a red outline. So the first thing I'm going to do is under fill. Let me zoom in over here. Okay, under fill, I'm going to hit this X. Okay, and what that's going to do is going to remove all of the interior parts. I'm going to remove all the interior color, and I'm just left with that red outline. So now everything here is going to get cut out, right? Which is what I want. So um, the other thing I want to do is I double check that stroke file. Make sure it's a nice thin line. Uh, that's perfect. Okay, so 0.2 millimeters. So now double check, kind of see the line. These all these points look pretty good. Notice that all these points too. If there's something that didn't quite line up, you can always click and drag it and make it you know the shape you want. But um, mine picked pretty well. I'm gonna leave it. Up. Now for this black section here, this part I let's say I want that engraved. I'm gonna link that back together. So for here, I do want to keep that infill. Okay, so if I look over here now. I've got everything. I want to make it nice and black. I'm going to create everything black there. So in my case here, everything shown black would get filled in. Okay, so that could be kind of one option of how you want things set up. Uh, now, the other thing I want to keep track of, though, is right now, um, I'm going to kind of leave all of these sections. I'll kind of be left with a um, this portion here. All this stuff will end up getting cut out. So. For example, I might actually go ahead and delete all this because I don't need that. Um, actually, I lied. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like that. So everything in black will get um, engraved. Everything in red will get cut out. And they'll end up with this shape. So that's kind of um, what I'm hoping for. So that looks pretty good. So at this point, uh, I might double check my stroke here. I might keep that blank. Okay, so now <clears throat> only things in red will get cut. Everything in black will get saved. And so that's the basic idea of creating a, um, a vector file for laser cutting. Uh, obviously, you can see over here, there's a, some other things you can mess around with. You, can, you know, you can create a circle. Let's say I want to make it into a keychain, right? So let's maybe make one other edit here. So I'm, uh, I'm going to remove the red here. So I just have this being engraved. And let's say I want to create a circular keychain. So all I'm going to do is create a little circle that goes around. Um, I might change this to having a red stroke on the outside. So I'm going to click on stroke, make it all red, and I'm going to make no info. So now I have that red outline. And let's just try to center it. Okay, so one, one nice way of creating something centered would be coming over here, over here to object, uh, align and distribute. Okay, so I use this tool pretty often as well. So what I'm going to do is select everything I want to line up. So in this case, it'd be the circle. That'll be what I'm cutting out. And let's say it's my little stem logo. You select multiple things. You can, again, click and drag. Uh, or if you hold down shift while you click, it'll select multiple parts. OK, to make this a little more extreme, I'm actually going to completely offset so you can kind of see what happens. I'm going to select these two items. And the ones I typically use is this one, which is going to align things along a vertical axis. Click on that lines it up that way. And the other one will probably be lining up 
horizontally. Okay, so now things are set compared to each other. Things are looking good. Okay, uh, next up, I might highlight over it again. And the other thing I would often use is up here is changing the size. Okay, so you see this little lock and key, lock box button. Lost it here, sorry. Let me just do this one more time. Oops, it's not letting me. All right, hopefully you can see what I'm clicking right here. Uh, I'm going to lock portions. So let me click on that first. And then I can input the size I want. So let's say um, I really just want this a four inch height. Okay, so let's just change that to four. And then that means my entire thing works with four. Okay, or maybe I change that to three. Okay. And now, even looking at this, I realize now my circle is actually not a perfect circle. So I might click on that again, unchange the proportion, and make that three inch. Okay, notice it's not centered anymore, so I'm going to go back through, highlight over it, center it again, and now I've got my, you know, keychain per se. I might add a hole for my keychain, putting another circle there. Um, let's say for the small uh, size, maybe I'll change that to 0.375. want that to be a circle, and again, I'm going to line that up vertically. Circle. Now it's nice and lined up. Right? So here's kind of an example of a quick and quick way of creating a little key game with a custom logo. Again, everything in black will be engraved. Everything in red will get cut up. Once I have that set up, I'm just going to save it. <clears throat> Hit save. And uh, notice right off the bat, it saves it as a .svg file or standard vector graphic file. And it's ready to go to the laser file. All right. Um, that should be about it. If you, need, if you have any other questions, obviously message me or uh, you can let me know. All right. Good luck, everyone.